What's going on guys? On my channel, I regularly do a whole lot of flexing about how expensive my camera gear is and how much of a legit baller I am, even though my credit card statements kind of looks like the matrix. It's just like a bunch of numbers. I don't even like to look at it. But we're gonna go back to the basics and build an entire kit with camera, lenses, tripod, microphone, all the stuff you need to get started. And we're gonna try to keep that total budget under that thousand dollar mark. This video is sponsored by Storyblock, so thank you guys, because of them, we are gonna be to give out everything we buy here today. Storyblox was formerly Videoblox. You've probably heard of them if you've been in the video industry for a little while. They're the place to go for royalty-free footage, backgrounds, After Effects templates. They even have 360 videos. And I actually didn't know about their After Effects templates too. You guys know that I'm lazy, so I don't really create graphics for my videos on YouTube. But now with these After Effects templates, I can just uh, boom, title, potato jet, intro graphics. You sign up to be a member and you have unlimited access to a whole bunch of stuff. It's all royalty free. Of course, ideally we always film all our own B-roll, but in the cases where there's just not enough budget to travel to England to get a shot of like a grassy field or something like that, you could just head over to Storyblocks. Oh my God, look how many grass fields there are. Kids running through a field, fields with rivers going through, fields with chicken, fields with baby, all that stuff. That is why you need Storyblocks in your life. Go check them out using my link in the description. Time to move on to the shopping spree bar. Woo! First thing that comes to mind is probably the Canon M50 for low budget cameras. For the price, that is a super powerful camera. I used it a whole bunch. If you can swing it, I definitely recommend it. But in this case, this is slightly out of our price point just by a little bit. If we spend 700 bucks for our camera, we're not gonna be left with any accessories. Some of these kits look kind of interesting with a tripod and memory cards, but a lot of times they just throw a lot of this junk at you and you're like, ah, I'd just rather have a few good things than a whole bunch of random stuff. So we're gonna custom build our kit and try to make it look lit. I shouldn't use that word. Canon 200D, or also known as the SL2, depending on where you're located. Obviously, if you wanna go legit, then you're gonna to need to pay that full price, but sometimes if you go for like the no warranty international model, and sometimes on eBay, you can actually find these cameras for a little bit cheaper. Check this out, 446 with the camera and a basic lens. First thing I wanna do is get some better glass on that camera. The lens that it comes with is pretty like, man, it's okay at doing a whole bunch of stuff, but let's get some interesting lenses. So let's start off with this lens. I have one of these and I love it for the price. It's 42 bucks. It's a 50 millimeter 1.8. So let's throw that in the cart. How about we try to get another interesting lens in here? Oh, okay. 24 millimeter is a good wider angle lens. 129 bucks for a 24 millimeter f 2.8. That's not bad. I mean, for that price point, this could be one of those lenses. If you're going to go out at night and you don't want to carry around a big old camera with you, these lowers are much smaller when you have a tiny lens on it. So you could just sling it on your side and still go out with your pals and film in low light with a wide angle lens. Oh, this is gonna be good. We still have 382 bucks left. We're gonna want some ND filters. So both these prime lenses we just bought have a filter size of 52 millimeters, which means if you wanna throw on like an ND filter, which we'll talk about in a second, that's the size you need. So let's get that now. ND filter at 52 millimeter. Nice ones are good. Polar Pro makes really good ones, but we're gonna go on a budget. $21.99 for a variable ND filter. So let's go with that. Let's go look for a tripod now. The term you might wanna use is a fluid head. Fluid head basically just means that you're gonna be able to do some nice smooth pans, opposed to like a photography tripod where it's gonna be like <laughs> I've never heard of Magnus before, but it has 201 ratings and it's 79 bucks, so that fits right in our budget. 15 pound weight capacity. Our camera is going to weigh very close to nothing. So this should not be a problem. Add to car. Let's add a little light. I heard Aperture makes a really small light. That's only like 45 bucks. There it is. Never really tried this one, but I've heard so many good things about it, especially for low budget use. So 45 bucks added. Ooh, also we're gonna need ourselves an SD card. Let's get a 64 gigabyte card. You could even go a little bit higher. I generally like to get the highest size so that I can throw it in the camera and never worry about it. And also get SanDisk. I've had a lot of issues with different memory cards. 90 megabytes per second, 64 gigs, only 22 bucks. So let's go for that. We're gonna be shooting HD on this camera. So 64 should be a pretty decent amount. Rode makes a pretty decent microphone for 
5230. So let's go with that one. Okay, we want a camera bag. We're just literally looking for something that's cheap and will work. So I'm just looking at the reviews here. 26 bucks for this camera bag. Oh wait, this one's 25.99. Hey, we can save an extra dollar by having the inside be orange. I'll take that dollar. We have 134 bucks left. Ooh, let's see if we could get a gimbal maybe. These might be a little bit out of our price range. I've tested the ZN Crane V2. That's a pretty solid one, but three, 39, that's a little bit out of our price range. We only have 134 bucks left, so we're gonna have to go for something even cheaper. We could do like a handheld rig. This is definitely gonna help stabilize your footage because once we put those prime lenses on, you're not gonna have any sort of image stabilization, so you wanna be able to brace it on something bigger so you don't get that like jitter and make it look crazy. So any of these would work for handheld, but why don't we try getting some super smooth shots maybe? So how much are glide cams? Uh, fly cam? This one is 160 bucks. Ooh, barely out of budget. That's gonna put us over by like 20. I guess we could just kind of go with one of these cheap ones. I honestly don't know how good these little ones are gonna be, but this is gonna be a learning experience for both of us. Ooh, it's got different colors. We could do it in hot pink. It's 56.99. That's three bucks cheaper than the other colors. So you know what? We're going with hot pink. Got 71 bucks left, so let's get some batteries. We're gonna go with aftermarket batteries because we're on the hunt for a discount right now. They're always a little bit risky because they might not communicate properly with the camera. So you are taking a little bit of gamble, but you're saving money because each one is 61 bucks if you were to pay full price for official Canon, which I do recommend. But if you're on a budget like that, we are going to go with something like this one with a dual charger, kind of like this one right here. It's super convenient being able to charge both batteries at once. We're going to test out to see if these work properly. And if they do, I'll link it all in the description in case you guys want to find all this stuff. All right. So we have our kit. We are under budget. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to put in this order and we're going to check back in a week or two to test out all this stuff. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Woo! We got our camera here set up now. We have the microphone on top of the 200D and it's on here on this tripod. So let's switch this camera. Carrie just found this dresser for free. So we hauled it back this morning and she's gonna fix it up, make it look all nice and we're gonna put it in our room. So I'm gonna switch this over to 60 frames per second and just get a couple of shots from the tripod. Right now we're kind of in a shaded area. So lighting generally looks decent and soft. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so first impressions, pretty good. This reminds me a whole lot of the Canon 80D and other Canon DSLRs. We filmed all this in 60 frames per second, but then played it back at 24. So it's playing at about 40% speed. So it's a little bit of slow motion, but this can do that in HD. And by the way, this is not the sharpest camera you can get for this price point. So what camera you decide to get for this price range really depends a whole lot on what your needs are. One of my top priorities is really good autofocus. That whole sequence was shot entirely on autofocus. I really like how this has a flip out screen. This doesn't have 4K, but as you guys know, I like 4K, but it's not top priority for me. I'd rather have just really good out of camera colors, ease of use and autofocus, flip out screen, flexibility of lenses and all that. So the Panasonic G7 also looked like another camera under the thousand dollar price range that looked pretty interesting. So that might be another one you might want to do research on, but Canon cameras are just generally what I'm super familiar with. So that's why we're going with this camera. Now, remember earlier when we were shopping for tripods, I said, get a fluid head that's so that you can kind of get nice slow even pans that give you that super fluid motion opposed to like a photography tripod like the one that this camera is sitting on so basically I would release it and then it just kind of moves all over the place and then when I find my frame I can lock it and it stays there the benefit of these photography ball head ones are that they're usually a whole lot smaller which is exactly why it's popular for vlogging you don't really want to carry this whole thing everywhere you go I just totally go around vlogging like this in public huh just hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel 
channel. Speaking of vlogging, if you guys are looking more to vlog rather than to get cinematic images, this 24 millimeter that we have on here right now, it generally works, but I personally like to have it even a little bit wider out. Also, this lens doesn't have image stabilization. So if I kind of move around and my hand's not as stable, I drank too much coffee, then it's just not gonna look as fluid. So I didn't include it in this kit, but this is a 10 to 18 millimeter with image stabilization. And we're gonna take it and slap it on this camera real quick. And remember, this is a 24 millimeter and we're gonna go all the way out to 10, which is super wide. So here we go. And there we go. Now we are on a 10 millimeter and see how much wider it is. You can see everything. If I have friends or other things I wanna show in my scene, then this captures everything because it's a super wide angle lens opposed to it being kind of just like stuck here in my face all the time. And the beauty of these cameras is that once you get the camera system all set up, you can keep adding to your lens collection. These are all EF lenses, which means all of these lenses can fit onto this camera. So you can always upgrade with lenses. And I believe Canon EF mounts are the most common out there right now, so you'll never run out of options in lenses. For example, this 100 millimeter macro lens. Let's take a look at this teeny little plant, which I think might be dying. Well, pretty cool, huh? But again, these lenses and things are things that you wanna add on as time goes on. Most people don't just go out and just buy all the stuff they need all at once. Plus this lens costs more than the camera body itself. So we're gonna stick with the lenses we have for the rest of this video. So this is Max. He's my henchman that I found on the street 20 minutes ago. We're gonna make this yard look epic. Max, I'm not paying you $2 an hour to be on your phone, damn it. I'm just kidding, I've known this guy for like 15 years. Thanks for visiting for Christmas, Max. While you're here, would you mind picking up some dog poop? Absolutely. All in a good hard day's work. That one's fresh, so, you know, make sure you don't leave any behind. Did you just pick that up with your hand? Yeah. Did you really? I'm gonna throw up now. But yeah, as of right now, with this lighting, he may look like a very scary, intimidating Viking. Terrifying. It strikes fear in your heart. Like, is he gonna murder me with an ax? Maybe. <laughs> but once we get the lighting all finished up, you're gonna be like, wow, I see how warm and cozy he is on the inside. You're gonna look beautiful, trust me. Dude, you got like two white hairs in your beard. Well, it's actually like one, it's like half white and half red. <laughs> and we're done. Carrie's a little bit jealous because she's getting replaced by Max now for all the modeling gigs. Even though it looks kind of cool, Max is way in the dark right now. So remember that aperture light that we talked about earlier? We'll check this out. So we're gonna just put a little bit of light onto Max's gel that it comes with, which is an orange gel. So it takes this white light and takes it, makes it orange, kind of matches these lights a little bit better. It's gonna make that scary guy over there look like an angel. Here we go. All right, Max, now give us a good like stylish look like. <sighs> Wow! Fantastic! Max is now our lighting intern. Lighting guy, hey, hey, lighting guy, pay attention. Over here, it's gonna front light. Unpaid intern? I'm, I want you to get it out of the shot. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So if you could get it, not not bring it into the shot, but out of the shot, that'd be fantastic. So the autofocus on this is great. You just kind of pick on which dog you want autofocus on. That dog, front dog. Unpaid intern, why do you look so sad? So after playing with this guy for a couple of days, I'm definitely impressed. Of course, there's gonna be some restrictions and limitations when working with an entry-level camera, but as long as you pair it with the right lenses and use it in the right settings, this is very, very capable. And of course, the beauty of this is that you can start here and build on it as you go. And of course, this ND filter that I had on here for all the daylight shots, I made a whole video about it. I'll link it in the description, but basically, if it's broad daylight and you're filming outside and you dial in your settings to exactly where you want it, a lot of times, it's gonna come out a little bit extra bright. And this will kind of even that out for you and you can always rotate it because it's a variable ND filter. So this can be many different densities. Oh, and by the way, this pink handheld stabilizer that we got, these things are great, but they're not something you could just pick up and use right away. You need a lot of experience with it or else you could end up feeling like the camera's on a boat, just rocking back and forth. It just doesn't look very good. Opposed to a gimbal where you could just pick it up and start getting super smooth footage out of the box, even though you've never picked one up before. So there is gonna be a learning curve with this. I've seen 
seen people do awesome stuff with this. I've just never gotten that comfortable with these. So my footage is always a little bit rocky. Also, when I took this out, it was super windy and these things get affected by wind. The postal gimbal, which has the motor that can kind of counter the wind. So definitely better than nothing. If you're willing to put in the work to learn how to use one of these things, then you can get some awesome stuff with it. But this camera was too light for it. So I ended up just adding a bunch of random stuff to it to make this get more weight because this camera is super light. But you could literally just tape on a random piece of metal to it and it should balance fine. And let's just finish filming this video on the Canon SL2. I got the video micro up top and the 24 millimeter lens. And don't forget, we are giving away this camera to enter to win. All you gotta do is leave a comment down below about whatever the hell you want. I don't even care. So one of you guys will win this setup. Let's close off this video by reading a few comments from my last video, which was just a tour around the new studio. So let's see what you guys had to say. If you get a green screen, people are definitely gonna put you in a floating house. Okay, I'm definitely never giving you guys a green screen. It's always gonna be orange or blue. Or how about white? We haven't seen white yet, have we? Let's try that out. How's it looking? Does it look awesome or what? It looks all right, I guess. <laughs> it's not my favorite. Don't forget to get security cameras and alarm systems for the place. Already done, my boy Jonathan. He works at a security camera company. He's been hooking me up with cool stuff already, so this place is gonna be on lockdown. Venom5809 says, congratulations on moving out of your converted crack motel. You are moving up in the world. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in East Hollywood and that place is not too far off from a converted crack motel. I love East Hollywood and Silver Lake, that general area, it's very up and Coming. A lot of artists and crazy things going on all the time and it was awesome, but now I'm definitely ready to live in a quieter part of town, which I'm in right now. The dog needs his own studio. This is actually the dog studios. I'm just using it once in a while to film these videos. Rick says, nipples. <laughs> Dang, that white shirt, man. I always film not thinking about it and in editing, I'm always like, damn it. Are you alive? I, wait a second, where's my pulse? What the, what, what the hell, when did this happen? Am I in heaven? Actually, this is exactly what my heaven would look like. Me just floating in a cloud and a red camera just like floating next to me. Actually in heaven, this would be an area Alexa, but you know, close enough.